Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in on you. Uh, look, I'm not going to be long today. Uh, real briefly, I want to remind you uh, about my 25th book project and your ability to sponsor a space in that book to pay tribute to someone who has made a difference in your life. That information will be in the description box also. Uh, to remind you uh, to support the work we do at the Odyssey Project. And the way that you can do that is also going to be in the description box. Okay, this is going to be real brief. Um, I'm doing this as a tribute to a fellow educator, uh, a fellow, fellow advocate, uh, someone who has developed a reputation among his peers, among his colleagues, among his community. Uh, uh, his name is Dirk Tillotson, T-I-L-L-O-T-S-O-N. Uh, he was gunned down in his home on last Friday, October 1st in uh, a community in Oakland, uh, which is experiencing a crime, a violent crime surge. Uh, and so, is experiencing a violent crime surge, and um, the community is considering it a loss on a number of different levels. Uh, it's people as high up as the director of education for uh, the state of California uh, has spoken up and on his behalf. Uh, he has helped a lot of people. One of the things that he is known for is advocating uh, for uh, for equity and equality uh, in access, access to resources necessary for education. Uh, one of the things that he pushed for uh, intensely was equal access to uh, high quality internet service. And while many of us have come to see internet as a given, uh, literally, you know, I walk into my home and there's internet service in my home and in my home office that when I walk into my office uh, offsite at the office building, there's internet in my office. Uh, I never give it a second thought. Well, the truth of the matter is, it's not a given that there are people who don't have it. I know there are programs where I am at right now where students uh, who are low income students can get internet for as little as $10 a month. Uh, it's not necessarily the high speed uh, expansive bandwidth that we're probably used to, but it, you can do the basic things like do research and search the internet. It's for streaming and watching videos, which is also a big part of education now is watching videos, getting instruction <coughs> from videos and reviewing uh, content in videos. It's a part of classwork now. So you need uh, enough bandwidth um, and enough uh, speed to be able to do that. Well, he was an advocate for that. And he was an ag advocate for ensuring that every child had access to the same resources as the wealthy and the privileged. And, you know, there is some speculation that uh, this wasn't simply a home invasion, that he may have been targeted. And this, you know, wouldn't be out of the ordinary. Um, you know, the fact that he may have been targeted uh, because of his advocacy, because he may have uh, stepped on some toes or rubbed some people the wrong way in his push for what he believes in and what he's passionate for. How did they get in it? What he's passionate for. So, oh man, I cannot stand when some a gnat, and these gnats in Houston have been horrible all summer long. Hopefully the winter gets it soon enough and kills them all off. And, oh, okay. <laughs> I know y'all look at this dude is tripping. They, they annoy me. I mean, like to no end. And like, they're worse than flies because a fly will get to 
that's what I'm talking about. The fly will get to a window and you just let it down and the fly will go out. Nats don't do that. They don't cooperate. But anyway, uh, I just, uh, you know, came to hear about uh, the great depth of the work that he had done. Uh, he is a household name and he is a household name and I gotta let these windows down. I don't know where they came from. Uh, but uh, in, in, he's a household name in uh, on the West Coast. But actually, uh, I went and did some research on him, and he has done work around the world. He has been a champion for the less fortunate, and unfortunately, I heard. And, 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 and I agree with uh, Dr. Boris Watkins on this, that far too often we fail to give our true champions their flowers while they live. And it's normally under circumstances and situations like this that we hear about them and they get some praise. But other than that, they work in the shadows, they work in obscurity. And because it's not about fame and it's not about popularity and because it's not about the pat on the back, they go unnoticed and it actually impedes their ability to accomplish what they accomplish but they're just so focused they're so driven they work so hard that it, it, it it's 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 uh, a shame that the only time we get to really hear about them and celebrate them is after their demise uh after they have transitioned and left this place and you know i believe in the continuance of spirit. I believe uh, in uh, the process of ancestry and ancestors. And I know that uh, he has transitioned from teacher and elder to that of ancestor. And that we can still pay homage. We can still show love. But what I would want to encourage us to do is to really truly celebrate and show love to those who are out here doing this on a regular basis um, and really to, to no fanfare. And the thing is, when we do what we do, we're not doing it for fanfare. Matter of fact, you've heard me say this a bunch of different times. If I was really looking for popularity, if I was really looking to be noticed and, and uh, you know, I would take a different approach. I would do things differently. I would be more boisterous. I would be more sensational. I would be more confrontational. I would be more engaged in the superficial. And because the superficial is where everybody hangs out. The superficial is where everybody knows. Um, it amazes me that, you know, um, that some of the people who have the greatest popularity reach and are celebrated the most have the least impact or even a negative impact in the community. We celebrate celebrities simply because they're celebrities, not because of their impact, not because of what they're doing in the community, not because of a positive force uh, that they wield, but simply because they're known, because they have popular songs out because they starred in this or that or they play this sport or that sport not necessarily because I have always thought that the greatest part of being an athlete isn't what you do on the field, on the court in the arena it's what you do in the community uh, and I've always felt that way, I've always looked and gauged other uh, people who were athletes on what they did when they weren't playing the sport. What are you doing when you're not playing the sport? How are you living your life? How are you taking the advantages that have been afforded to you by your celebrity, by your added resources? And it's not just about giving money. It's about whose lives are you willing to touch? Because to me, when you have an excess of money, giving money isn't as significant as it is for the person who may not have uh, an exorbitant amount of money. Uh, giving money is huge 
when it's in small uh, supply. So the person who gives to what I do and it, it represents a certain significant portion of their uh, of their total income or their total uh, discretionary uh, funds or whatever it is they're giving out of. You know, I don't know because I don't ask, but I can see the sacrifice. And the thing is, not that I'm sitting up and diminishing what someone who may be well off may do, but the sacrifice is simply different. But for the person who has an exorbitant amount of money, for you to give your time, for you to be present, for you to sit up and give people in uh, impoverished environments access to you uh, to see that things are possible, no matter what it is you do, that they have something special in them, that they aren't trapped in the life that they are currently living. And that's one of the biggest issues that we have uh, in our community is simply that uh, our children, our youth aren't exposed to alternative options outside of athletics, entertainment, and crime. Either I'm, I'm, I'm a dope dealer, I'm a hustler, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a ball player, or, or, or you know, I'm, I'm going to make it acting and singing or rapping or something. Uh, nobody's aspiring to be a business owner. Well, I'm going to say nobody, but not enough are aspiring to be business owners. Not enough are aspiring to uh, you know, be doctors and lawyers and 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 and, and others that will provide a, 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 a wonderful and super uh, f fantastic lifestyle, but also allow them to touch lives and be a positive force in the community. We need more legal advocates. We need more advocates uh, in medicine, um, in healthcare. We need more advocates in the business world, not just as business owners, but as business coaches, as business advisors and consultants. Uh, we need more people in mental health who can sit up and not only practice uh, clinical uh, psychology and therapy, but also develop new ideas about how to treat certain psychological conditions and mental health issues as it pertains to specifically the black community because uh, Afrocentric psychology is different than Eurocentric psychology and not everybody understands that and you're trying to apply a template to something that is not responsive. And so I can speak on that because that's my area. But what I'm trying to get everyone to understand is we need people to really start showing love to the people who are really boots on the ground. The people who are actually doing the work, the people who are doing the research, the people who are actually in touch uh, with the community in need, the people who are actually sitting down going hand to hand and laying their hands on the problems of the people in the community. We need to start showing some love, showing some support, making people aware of what they're doing. They, they need to be our superstars, not for the sake of praising them so much, but for the sake of making sure that they have everything they need to do what it is they do. Uh, that, that 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 so many we have lost so many that died in obscurity that were literally I mean just super champions for our community and and outside of the people that helped nobody knew who they were and a lot of them uh prefer to function that way but the thing is they still need to be loved they still need to be shown love they still need to have support we need to get behind those who are actually doing the work you know, and I'm not saying that it's any that that it's anything inherently wrong from uh, uh, as far as gravitating towards an individual because they do something exceptionally well, whether it be play a play a sport or uh, sing or rap or, or or whatever. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that makes up such a small community and it should be more gravitating towards them, not because of their profession but because of their impact. And that is what I want to do. That's a big part of my personal goal is to be an impact. Something that my uh, great grandfather, who was my adopted father, he was my, biologically, he was my grandmother's father, but legally he was my father. Um, 
And one thing that he, he told me, he told me so many things, he taught me so much. Uh, but one of the things that he taught me that will stick with me forever, he said, son, always fill your space. Fill the space that you've been given, fill it. And what, I, what he meant by that is when you walk into a room, make your presence felt. Not in a domineering, uh, condescending way, but in an empowering way. You should never walk into a space and leave people the same way they were when you came in. You should live your life to change lives, to empower lives. And that's the way I try to live my life every day. That's why you see me dropping some of the content that comes from some of my other companies and other pages on the Black Voice channel. Because while we need to be B1, while we need to be black first, what we also need to be is good, strong black people as individuals because we can only be as strong as our weakest link. And a lot of times we are so focused on the group that we're not healing ourselves. We're not strengthening and empowering ourselves. We're not elevating ourselves as individuals. And so that's why I dropped that on there because you need to be strong as an individual. You need to be able to function and perform in life at a very high level in order to have all the things that life has for you. But we really truly need to show love to people like uh, Dirk Tillotson. And I'm going to do a little bit something more once I learn more about it, once I get more. My biggest concern and my biggest fear about this entire situation is that the uh, it was one of us that killed him. That's my biggest concern is that we're going to find out the person who killed him was from a group of people that he was trying to help. And I've seen this happen more than one time. And I, I mean, it happens more than you want to admit. And I've had people tell me, Doc, you shouldn't be over there, man. Them cats don't have no respect. They don't have no love. And I say, you can't. The reason they're callous is because nobody will come in. And yeah, you, in order to be amongst people who literally have very little regard for life, you put your life at risk. The hope is to rescue as many as possible. The hope is to sit down. These are the men, these are the boys who are becoming men who we're going to need to be our warrior class, to be those who will stand up and defend with their lives what's precious to us. And yes, that means risking going out there because at, at, at a certain level, you got to realize because we failed is the reason they're out there in the first place. We have a responsibility. And so, look, as I said, you know, I just wanted to take some time and actually speak on this um, because it kind of hit. Uh, you, you got these people, like I said, they are champions. They are true warriors and advocates uh, for those we say we love and they get very little shine and, and it's okay for them but it's not okay for the whole because we need them to be out front and recognized and loved and we need to develop a practice of loving on those who are truly champions in our community while they live the posthumous celebration is more about us than it is about them. Let them know their love. Get behind the work they're doing. Do things that supports what they're passionate about, especially if you believe in the work they're doing. We've got to do that. Uh, you know, I'm sending love and prayers out to his family, families, his family members. I'm sending love and support, you know, uh, to those that he touched. Uh, who are filling a, a huge void right now. Uh, and I'm hoping that there's someone who can step in and fill that void. Uh, and I'll be reaching out to find out to see if there's anything that we can do uh, from the Odyssey Project to help that. And those of you who have followed me for any time know that I am a huge advocate for the education of my youth. Hell, two of my books are completely dedicated to it. Another three of the books are somewhat dedicated to it. And then one book is dedicated to uh, the importance of uh, creating strong children who are, have a sense of identity. But uh, the miseducation of black youth in America, uh, the uh, academic apartheid born in captivity, 
Psychopathologist, A Legacy of Slavery, and uh, The Undoing of the African American Mind are all things that have a very strong center in education. And so that's a passion of mine. So this one kind of touched uh, and hit, you know, I hate to hear anybody losing their lives. Uh, but when you have a soldier that's warring for our people, especially our babies, uh, it's a huge loss. Uh, and there are, uh, the police department is being sort of tight lipped about it, but that's a, there are some mo uh, motives to look at that may uh, indicate that they were targeted. And so there's still some things to be discussed about that. But I just had to speak on uh, this brother's work uh, and the tragedy, because a lot of people don't even aware aren't even aware of it, uh, and so I think that you know uh, I felt like it was the least I could do. So on that note, look, I'm gonna shut it down. I'm gonna get off. Uh, I'm almost to the crib. Uh, it's got a lot going on uh, that we need to get uh, done today, even after I get home. So I just had to stop by and talk to you guys about that. You guys have an unbelievable.